the second one. The I gave it to you.
depression can be huge. Um, DVT, immobility. Um, the other thing that happens to these people is that they never they lose the basal constriction, the autonomic um, uh, basal action that happens below the level of the injury. So oftentimes, before we even raise our head in the morning, we need to put on their headphones and their wraps or whatever because it's going to get dizzy set them up all the blood pressure and we need that compression um, especially before you set them up and get them out of that so that uh, hypotension is always a, a problem and um, Warren gave us an example of his patient <coughs> orthostatic hypotension yeah so I have a little story to share. Um, my brother's talking to me and he said he was in the class. He was a gynecologist and a So a lot of years, a lot of years, and he's been with her. Um, he lived with me for about 10 years after my mom had a financial care. But he was now with the VA home and he has recurrent huge gaps in the VA. What the doctor was having to do the neurologist was to put him for a year or two. But it turned out that because of his um, paralysis and the slippery computer site was too low, and when he had bowel movement, it was constantly getting in that cup. And so that was causing more infections because it was smearing up over it. So it was constantly in that site, that single management site. So they decided to remove it, which caused a false passage. So when they went back into just do regular um, urine tests, but they could um, so you he like, had the attention one way or the other. They went to do a family camp on him. And um, the nurse had gotten, the LPN nurse had gotten into that false passage instead of the bladder, and then blew up the balloon while she was in the
I was in hospitals after my accident for probably six months. What happened in here? You want to tell us about your accident? I got my notes right here. Uh, uh, so, and the, the thing that I noticed that I picked up on is body language from my caregivers. And so I have to do this every time when I talk to a health occupations or nursing class. The people that I established that established the most trust with me and I felt like we're the most confident. The people that have a great smile, so we're gonna we're gonna practice. <laughs> <laughs> Don't it's not a giggly smile. Like but when you're walking in the room, you have to have a real confident, wonderful smile and it really does establish uh, trust and confidence with the uh, patient. So everybody, we're going to have to try this session. Okay. 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 Um, <laughs> I, I truly mean that because if you're walking in and just take a, just to take blood pressure and you don't have a smile on your face and if you greet me or if you don't greet me like, like some kind of mannequin putting in bed, then I don't like you. So and if you more you want. So just remember that. <coughs> really important. More than the, a lot of the other stuff. Okay, so I was on uh, vacation in Hawaii ten years ago, almost uh, this month actually. And uh, I was on a booty board and uh, I just got on a little wave and it pushed me into a sandbar and uh, it didn't break my neck but it's like if you squeeze the uh, a hose at, uh, between the C3 and C5 areas. So it's pretty high up. Stopped breathing and my wife knows I was just floating there and so she started screaming, grabs some people. Luckily, uh, we were at the farthest end uh, of Maui that you could be on, and so luckily there was a doctor there and his son, who was a firefighter, and they did CPR, and uh, coordinated CPR on me for 30 minutes. And then uh, took them 30 minutes to get the ambulance down there, and uh, <coughs> And then, I don't know. <coughs> so, and then went to the hospital in Maui and they uh, performed surgery to kind of stabilize my neck. And it was there about two weeks, ten days. And then they air flighted me to, or air ambulance me to St. Paul's. And I was there for a couple of weeks. Then I went to Craig Rehab Hospital in Denver, which is a pretty renowned. Uh, spinal cord injury and brain injury. They couldn't tell which one put me on, what floor put me on the brain injury or the spinal cord injury. That's just a little more there. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was pretty much out of it there for the first four weeks. Really until I woke up at Craig, I was, didn't really have much, don't have much memory of anything. I uh, got up to Craig. Uh, Craig, they do uh, the sip and pot. They teach you how to do sip and pot. So I can drive my chair. That's how I drive my chairs. Blowing and sucking in the, in the straw. So it has nothing to do with my breathing. Um, one doctor, idiot doctor, told me that I would never get off the bed. I still have a tray, uh, and um, we use that, that's why we're a little late. We use that um, because I get secretions. My right side, uh, my diaphragm, my whole right side is a lot weaker than my left. And so my diaphragm on the right side just doesn't work as well. It doesn't bring up that junk in there. So um, all my family gets to suction me and that's what Mason was doing in the car before we came up here so just pull that uh, let's see 
Oh, you can ask a question at any time. It doesn't embarrass me. You know, you won't. It, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, I've, I've had 595 people see me butt naked. <laughs>
think you have to have a, a purpose in life, regardless of, if you're going to nursing school, get a job, just get out of it and find something else. Have a purpose for what you're doing because you won't be happy. And so I think, I think just having my family around and going to uh, when my when this happened, my kids were younger, and so I would you know be going to their games um, and sit down with Nicole for the crop. <laughs> <laughs> is 
within the first 24, uh, 36 hours, is trying to uh, just like put nice on, uh, on that area, but they run sailing down the, around the spinal column and try uh, because what happens is you get a lot of swelling and that's what cuts off the, and of course those uh, nerve cells don't regenerate. So we talk stem cells, that's not going to happen uh, for a while, at least on spinal cord interpretations. Uh, I think they're going to do it probably for cancer patients. I don't see them doing that for spinal cord So, um, we looked into going to China and where they do stem, stem cells and stuff. And not, it, it's not, it's, you're not going to get a lot. Of, uh, I, I uh, emailed Christopher Reeves' doctor and he said, ah, you might get some sensation back, but probably not a lot of fun. So what good is that? So you can turn more? You can feel your massage on the right calf. Um, <laughs> so you can feel the massage yeah, on the right calf. Yeah, on the right calf, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so really I didn't feel like it was worth the money to look back. Do you have a lot of pain? Um, I do. You know what's interesting is um, uh, and I've had this since kind of when I was awake at Craig. My left shoulder and I heard this for quads and paraplegic. Um, my left shoulder in the morning and at night, just for it's like a it's like a sunburn, uh, and it lasts for about 15 to 20 seconds. If you can touch me, it's just on my left shoulder. And it was really bad at Craig, and they tried to put uh, patches on there, those, you know, whatever those are. And that didn't do much. And I've heard that a lot of uh, quads, heard of one guy that uh, was reading about him who was able to eventually walk, but he says every time he gets in the shower, it's like pins and needles um, going, going across the street. They don't really know why that happens. It's just, um, and then I obviously, with your arms in this position all day, your traps and uh, get really, really tight. And so I do go to a physical therapist, and um, she does massages, um, and all she does for 30 minutes is work on my traps and up to my, uh, uh, what do you call those, back on your head, those little bumps. Where your traps, occipitals, she works on the arm, and those, it really feels good. It, it just was. Uh, how much, um, how many care providers do you have in a day? Um, okay, I have two that come in the morning, CNAs, and then one that comes at night, and do that. So it's it's harder when you have a shower day and all that stuff. It, it's pretty hard work really for them because just to roll me around in bed and you know get me dressed and all that stuff. It, it's a lot of hard work. Oh, the other thing I was going to say, medications. Um, one of the things that would happen is. Uh, when I was first out of the hospital, all of a sudden, man, my legs would just fly up. They just started going crazy. And so finally, my physiatrist said, well, we need to get you on a bathroom pump. So it's just like an insulin pump. Uh, it's on my right side, just pull over and over. And just, um, hey, Ralph, it just got, has a little uh, catheter that goes to the spinal column. And uh, it just delivers. It's just a more effective way to deliver back the phone to the spine. And that's really helped my legs a lot. I still think oral, just because my oral back of it, because I still get a lot of twitches and stuff like that. It just calms the, the nerves down quite a bit. You said you have a lot of 
eight to get there by noon, or you go up at six to get there by noon? They usually get me out between eight thirty and nine. Um, and um, just to get started. Yeah. And, it, and it, you know, it can take a lot. I mean, you can move pretty fast. Oh, um, first thing they do, um, put a suppository in and do bowel care. Uh, did stem and do bowel care. Um, some quads I know do um, just do it every other day. Try and do it every day just because they eat a lot. But, um, but <laughs> it, uh, that's the first thing they do. Did you find that you had to do that more with the after the feeding the back of the mouth? Did that cause constipation? Uh, no. Does it, uh, all the meds I take, though, the pain and for pain, baclofen, uh, clarazepam, uh, all that stuff, I'm sure, points you out. So, 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 so do you get anxiety? Do I get what? Anxiety? Uh, I do, sometimes. Uh, it's really interesting at night, sometimes. I don't get sundowners before I start smacking people <laughs> <laughs> But sometimes I do, I do get um, anxious about maybe who's putting me to bed or um, so I just get jumpy. I don't know. Just, I, don't, I can't. That's a big question. I don't know why. And so I, I usually. I, I try to limit, and I don't have an increase my pain medication, but so every couple, three days, four days, five days, I'll take, I'll take uh, half a volume, and that tends to just settle me down. But I do get anxious about stuff. Um, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Well, <laughs> one of the things that gets to me is... Uh, uh, Mason, can you, or somebody, grab it for me. I don't know if I can
really helps me be able to get up. And, and, and so that's a pretty strong incentive to get up, get moving, is because um, you know you know I'm You're just going to get a capture of the culture. So uh, it's really, pulmonologist is one thing. I just have like two comments just in a Randy, but um, I think um, in regards to Misty's question about like the family, you know, like um, counseling and things like that, um, I think that um, you know Randy is absolutely wonderful, um, but you know it can be taxing for any any family member that has to do care, and so I think that that has been a huge blessing um, that they do have aides that come in and help get Randy up in the morning, so that Carol doesn't have to do that every day and somebody to come and help put his bed every night so that, you know, she doesn't, you know, that she can really be his wife rather than his full-time caregiver. But um, even even in that, you know, like getting Randy loaded up into the car isn't like a, hey, let's go to Albertsons. You know, it's like a 15-minute, like, hey, let's drive out and get in the car and things like that. So I think it's helpful, too, that, you know, she can go on, you know, like a weekend trip and go see her kids and things like that. It's kind of like the idea of respite care with a, a hospice patient, not to say your hospice patient. But, you know, just giving that the caregiver some time to just, you know, like be themselves without without being, you know, a caregiver. Um, but, you know, it, but it's great that, you know, because of all the help that they have, she really just gets to be his wife more than his caregiver a lot of times. Um, but I um, was, it, you want to talk about the cough assist? Because I don't think a lot of people okay. have seen one or know what it is. Uh, let me just tell you, uh, <coughs> we got long-term care insurance six months before my accident. So that was pretty, I don't know, pretty interesting. So um, when you suction me, a lot of times you just can't get it out. And everybody, it's just weird, everybody has their own technique for doing it, regardless of how they train you. But there is a, a machine that they have called the cough assist. So it blows air in, you hook it up right to the train blows air in and, and then it, uh, for three seconds, five seconds, five seconds, and then it, uh, it sucks it out. And so a lot of times that loosens it up. Uh, the albuterol is also helpful for that. <coughs> you know, because it just kind of gets it loosened up there. Used to, and they don't, I don't know, we just don't do it much anymore, but there's little packets of saline. And Carol used to just squeeze down into my tray and it would go down in there and it's not very comfortable but it's just moisture in there and then it, when you cough it says it just kind of stirs things up. But sometimes and this uh, real problem with quads and pneumonia is sometimes it just lays down in there in, especially in your right lower low and you're thinking about that, where you have your right lower low, remember you have three lows on your right side, two on your left, because of your heart. So uh, I think it just lays down in there on your right lower low there, and it just doesn't, you know, it just, uh, just stays there and develops infection. Um, some days, there, it's really weird, some days I'll have days where I just cannot wake up. Like, and and <coughs> maybe, uh, so I, I take uh, vitamins and I try and do stuff like that to, um, because it's just, and I don't know why, in some days I have days where I'm more, have more uh, spasticity. And it, that's what's really frustrating sometimes. When you want to be able to go, and I want to do things and you just don't feel well and have no idea what that is. So um, I do get kind of claustrophobic when um, we go to Boise State basketball football and we go to uh, Morrison Center plays, but it's really weird when you have all these people and they're all around you and they're all tolerating you. And mm -hmm. It's sometimes that uh, it kind of freaks me out. Mm -hmm. Just get in the crowd. What else do you want to know? I'm just curious, do you have any other health problems that aren't associated with your like high blood pressure or diabetes or not that the 
<laughs> but she would never have wanted her kid to do that before. <laughs> <laughs> And I wasn't able 
still going to use the sterile technique. Um, totally different than at home. So that's a good point, Kim. Totally different. Just whip that catheter out. Where's that been? Oh, it's been in the trash. It's <laughs> 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 not that bad. <laughs> Do you still have pretty frequent hospitalizations or <coughs> no to your care at home? No, they have to uh, they have to replace my bathroom uh, a while back, probably a year ago. They don't replace the batteries, they just replace the whole pump. And uh, so they have the surgery early in the morning. And I talked to this surgeon in the afternoon, late afternoon. He said, I can get out of here, right? He goes, well, we'd like to hold you for 24 hours. He said, I'm out of here, man. Just, yeah. just get me out of here. Because this is the German best in place. And, <laughs> and he, he goes, well, you did okay. And everything. he let me out. So no, I, I don't really... Like I said, if I get pneumonia, I'll go to my pulmonologist. He knows me. He's one of my insurers, and he's a good guy. He trusts me, and I'll tell him I'm, I'm not doing well. And he'll be able to know that and um, he can prompt me and get me out of there. You know what a prompt is? Prompt, prompt us. Where they can actually see is just like, where they can actually see. And I wish he could do it maybe every, I don't know, six months or so, just to go down and look in there, but it's just kind of expensive to do that. Do you get pneumonia? Uh, yeah, I think I get pneumonia more than it's diagnosed. I think I get both bits of pneumonia in there, and so I just have to you know, get it cleaned out as best I can just to <coughs> Okay, what, how are we for time for Does your insurance do a pretty good job of covering your medical expenses? Yeah, it does. It does. Um, it's been a real blessing. Um, my chair was about, uh, my original chair was about thirty-five to $40,000. This one's a little less just because the technology is and I can do more stuff with it. I can raise my legs. I can I can go back and I can just do more stuff with it. But expensive, expensive. Me. And then when <coughs> once they get your Craig, <laughs> uh, they uh, they find ways to. So they have to, you have to go through the physical therapy, which is pretty much worthless. For me, you know, because it's not that much they can do. Probably they could do it a couple of days a week, but you know, it's good three or four days a week, probably excessive. But it was a, it was probably a million. It was a little over a million for me throughout the time I got hurt to the time I was released. So. Some of, that, some of that doesn't really need to happen. How much is long term insurance? Now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> I have an opening. <laughs> uh, you know, here's this is really interesting. There's a lot of companies now that have either dropped selling long-term care or really restricted it because people like me, um, the claims when they come in are exorbitant. I mean, my, I, we pay out our aids. A hundred dollars a day. Yeah, just. Just need a little more. No, just a little under that. Um, and so you think about that for 365 days, pretty mean, hefty claim. So you're going to see companies really dropping long-term care as a as a product because you know, it just sucks the money right out of them. And people realize that they don't, they're, they are going to need it. There was an article headline in the paper um, a couple weeks ago that said dementia is one of the leading 
because of uh, uh, going to nursing homes in the next few years, just the percentage of people, because they're living longer. So there's just, it just sucks. The, I mean, we have one claim that just sucks. The, the insurance pool of money right out of there. So it's different for age groups. And just obviously, <coughs> when you here, it's Go to the cruise. 
cruise lines and we'll take a swing, but we'll have to arrange for the general. You have to have a suite, huh? Do you have enough room? <laughs> Look at that <laughs> one. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they usually have um, showers that are handicapped accessible, but still not the same. So there's times when I go a couple of days and feel kind of yucky because I don't get to shower. So it, it's not quite the same. But they do have handicapped accessible. It's just you do have to get it, a lot of work. So when we go on this deal, um, Carol, ooh, Carol will. Uh, <laughs> Because the bladder's still 
there and they didn't do the search and didn't take the ladder out and the cross came out, which he should have. But anyway, so my prostate or my bladder is just still there and stuff just sits in there. So we do um, bladder rinses every two or three nights with an antibiotic solution just to just and then pull it out just to make sure that I don't get a bladder infection, even though nothing's going down there. Mm -hmm. But, um, and so when when they do that, <coughs> it, and, and push that cold solution up there, yikes, I get really chilled. But uh, with dish reflex, wow, that's, that's an experience. Gotta try it out for this. What else do you want to know? How hard is it to get around? It's the, you know the worst places are the doctor's offices. They are so tight. And, you know buildings like this. I can get in. I can. Um, I can go to the movies pretty easy. You know, downtown photo has those open areas, you know. So you can just pull right in there. Pretty easy. But the doctor's offices, they have these tight little offices. And so every once in a while I'll just scrape off the edge of you know, something I realized, um, or I noticed when I first started thinking about care brandy, I think, you know, when we when we hear about, because um, I was in the office and I said, oh, you're going to go take care of this guy, he's really nice, he's funny, he's a quad, and I said, okay, well, you know, sure. Um, um, but I, I think I have this pre-idea of what he looks like in my head, and for whatever reason, I'm not even bald, and I'm not <laughs> really, really overweight, um, because I think that that happens really easily with people that are, you know, because Randy's immobile, you know, he can't get up and go running to lose weight, he just has to watch what he eats. So imagine, I mean, <laughs> if Randy were, um, <laughs> I mean, imagine packing an extra 100 pounds onto Randy and then him trying to get around, that would be so much more difficult. Um, you know, because he, he fits through the door just fine here, but if he was any bigger around, it might be a lot more difficult. Yeah, I to, that's a good point. <coughs> I to really watch what I eat and just be really careful. Um, and I try to eat very, I try to eat very small amounts, very slowly, so that I don't get used to getting, having my stomach get big, because it would be real easy for me to get overweight and there, there would be the diabetes and some other things, so I have to be really, really careful, really careful. Or at least I feel like it. Because um, I don't want to get bigger. <coughs> um, okay. So, how much did your home have to change after this to accommodate oh, everything? Good, good point. Um, we had to have entrances and exit ramps put into our home. We had to have, um, obviously, a shower. That you know, that you could roll in with a shower chair. We had to have, there was a, one room that had a, a step down, um, living room kind of thing, and we just had it um, raised, the floor raised so that we could be in there. Um, but everybody's home, and on the long term care policy, there is a benefit for home modification. So it was really helpful because I guarantee you. And I just had a couple we just have a couple little steps going up to our front door, but there's no way I can So you weren't in a, like a double story home or Well we do have a two story. But we were fortunate the person that built the home um, had a downstairs so that's a good point. If that had to happen, that would have been we'd have to stop. We have a Springer van that's uh, that's uh, that was probably fifty thousand. 
your career path? Uh, more I know I'm going to BSU, um, just business classes. So Does this want to lead you in the direction of nursing? Definitely <laughs> 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 not, actually. Well, no, that's, I mean, that's good to know. So, yeah. you know, you can still just be a son, not a nurse. Yeah. That's awesome. And BSU, why? I wonder why. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you a quick story. At the, I was at my daughter's softball game many, many years ago. It was really cold and all these blankets on me and my hat. And I was wheeling out, and I don't think this lady knew that I could hear her. But <laughs> she, she was from another, uh, another school, and she goes, Oh, I heard what happened to that guy. She said, that poor guy. And I thought, um, you know, I reflected on that and thought, I'm pretty fortunate, pretty lucky to have, because I've met a lot of people through this thing, got to do a lot of things that I wouldn't have gotten to do. I got 